Oh, whoa, look, figure ground. No, dude, figure ground is a compositional strategy where the elements in a scene are represented in binary to highlight what's important. Oh. Here are some examples of figure ground that you could find at home. The close-up of this wood could be read as the difference in height on the surface. These leaves represent a strong difference between leaf and not leaf, a reversible figure ground. This fence is also photographed in such a way that makes it clear that the fence is the focus or the figure in this composition. Let's see what else we can find around the house. All right, let's talk about cameras. So of course you can use your phone, iPhone, Android, whatever you have. Nowadays they have pretty decent cameras on them. But if you happen to have a DSLR or a mirrorless, I'm gonna show you how you can use these settings to your advantage. There are three main ways that we can control how much light comes in through the lens and gets captured by the camera's sensor. Those ways would be by controlling the shutter speed the aperture, or the ISO. Most DSLRs or mirrorless cameras have many different photo modes. As a beginner, you might start off on auto mode, which is fine, you'll get a great picture out of that. But the more you learn about your camera, the more you can shoot on manual mode and you have explicit control over every element in every photo that you take. Some of these other modes include P for program, a for aperture, or if you're using a Canon, it's called AV. S for shutter mode, or if you're using a Canon, it's called TV. And then M for manual mode. In shutter mode, all the other settings are set to automatic, but you have control over the shutter speed, which can be controlled by one of the scroll wheels that you might find on your camera. In aperture mode, all of the other settings are set to auto, and it's the aperture that you can control uh, with scroll wheels on your camera. So there's a lot of the settings that you can change, but what do they do? They do a lot of different things. Mostly, they control the amount of light that hits the sensor to process your image, but all of these also have a secondary effect. Shutter speed controls how long the shutter is open and affects the amount of light that hits the sensor. There's a secondary effect to this though. Faster moving subjects will appear blurry if the shutter speed is too low. Also, outdoor scenes will become blown out and overexposed if the shutter speed is too slow. Aperture controls how wide the shutter opens during exposure. A wider opening allows more light and a narrow opening allows less light. But this also has a secondary effect. With a large opening or a small aperture number, this is going to exaggerate the depth of field where your foreground is in focus and your background is blurred out. A smaller aperture opening or a larger aperture number is going to make sure that everything in your scene is in equal focus. ISO can also affect how much light gets into your photograph. A low ISO indicates a low sensitivity and a normal exposure to your image. A high ISO refers to a high sensitivity and can allow more light into your image. The trade-off here is when you have a higher ISO, your images are susceptible to more grain or visual noise.
We also want to talk about zoom and focus. If you have a lens that's capable of zooming, this is measured in millimeters and indicates the distance between the focal element and the actual camera sensor. A smaller number indicates a lower focal length and a wider image. A larger number indicates a longer focal length and a more zoomed in image. There are also lenses that are incapable of zoom called prime lenses, and these are a fixed focal length. For example, this one here is fixed at 50 millimeters. So if I wanna zoom, I'm gonna have to use my legs. With all of these settings and awareness of their secondary effects, you should be able to dial them in to get the perfect shot every time. Let's look at how camera settings change the effect of an image. This image is properly exposed on the left. The right is overexposed due to a much slower shutter speed. This image demonstrates a difference in depth of field. The left side is focused on the interior, and the right side is focused on the exterior. This image shows how aperture affects the light in an image. The left side is properly exposed with a large aperture, and the right side is too dark due to a smaller aperture. Are you ready to put your newfound skills to the test? Get out there and look for some images.